winter may seem endless, but April 15th will be here before you know it. Making sure you have an accountant or tax consultant that suits your needs could be important. Bill Hartley has some pointers on choosing the right person to prepare your tax return. For years, you've been doing your taxes yourself, no problem. But if you've changed jobs or started a business and your tax returns are becoming increasingly complicated, you may want to consider hiring a professional to do the job for you. And as CPA Peter Renzulli explains, a tax advisor should be doing more than just filling out forms. Tax consulting is a very narrow issue in the whole financial picture. Uh, a lot of people have doctors that are general practitioners because they want to make sure their health throughout their whole body is good. Well, it's the same thing with your finances. If you want a practitioner who's a professional who can provide you with those services to make sure your whole financial well-being is maintained and the planning for the future is done. Make sure your accountant is advising you what receipts to keep, aware of your lifestyle changes like divorce, helping you meet financial goals like purchasing a house, and above all, is available throughout the year, not just during tax season. Renzulli says there are basic signs your tax consultant may not be a professional. They're not looking at your tax return from prior years and giving you suggestions how to minimize taxes in the future. And finally, you want to make sure that they're charging you, you know, you're talking openly and they're charging you fair fees. You don't want to be paying contingency fees, which are fees based on the... ...for a individual. Creating a relationship with one accountant rather than several associates is better for problem solving. And remember, a certified public accountant or tax attorney will represent you in an audit. A tax preparer does not have the legal authority. Bill Hartley, CNN Business News, New York. And with the April 15th tax filing deadline very fast approaching, some filers are being hit with penalty notices from the IRS. And most people pay up even when they believe the IRS is wrong. Kitty Pilgrim reports, though, there are ways to fight back. If you received a penalty notice from the IRS and think they made a mistake, fight back. There's a way to appeal these notices. Last year, over one and a half million of those who received notices did. But if it means meeting the IRS in tax court, it's advised you get professional assistance. I would never advise somebody to represent themselves uh, in any tax matter that goes to a legal situation because there's a lot of ramifications behind the law that you may not be qualified to, to analyze and interpret. Whether battling the IRS alone or with professional help, there are a few things to keep in mind. File a petition notice quickly and by registered mail, so you have a receipt. Keep good tax records. Without documentation and receipts, you don't stand a chance. Educate yourself. Get books used to train IRS auditors. Go for a settlement. Remember the IRS considers the hazards of litigation. And most importantly, know when to keep quiet. Act professional and don't volunteer information. When you're in the gray area, you want to make sure that your position is very clear and it's well researched. You want to have regulations and rulings or some other documentation to support your cause. You don't want to go up to the IRS and say, well, this is how I interpret the law. If legal advice is something you can't afford, nationwide student tax clinics are available. The IRS can give you the location of one in your area. Kitty Pilgrim, CNN Business News, New York. Shocked after calculating your tax return for 1993? Discovered you owe the government a bundle, perhaps? Well, adjusting your withholding may be the answer. In this edition of Your Money, Jan Hopkins has the details. Are you desperately putting money together to pay your 1993 income tax? You're not alone. The new tax law hit some taxpayers hard. But there is an easy solution, so it won't happen next year. High-income individuals are getting penalized by not having their withholdings done properly on their W-4 forms. What you would do is recalculate your W-4 forms. You have the option of telling your employer to withhold X amount of dollars. To calculate your withholding for 1994, estimate your taxes for the year based on your 1993 return. Divide that amount by the number of paychecks to be received this year. This equals the total amount to be withheld each paycheck. If you're waiting until the last minute to file your taxes, you may soon realize it's not just the rich paying more.
Those who recently refinanced their homes have lower interest payments, thus higher taxes. The self-employed now have fewer deductions available. And newlyweds of 1993 are paying more. And for those on the short side of their payments, the IRS has your number. If they owe more than four or $500, um, they might be subject, subjecting themselves to a um, 2210 penalty. Which it's not a bad idea each January to um, check with your employer and see what the, what, if you should change your W-4. But after you do your tax return, you have a better picture. Getting a big refund at the end of the year isn't smart either. You're just giving the government an interest-free loan. If that's the case, add exemptions on your W-4 to reduce withholding. Keep that money for yourself in an interest-bearing account. That's your money. Jan Hopkins, CNN Business News, New York. The so-called marriage penalty, which has been around for years, got worse with the passage of President Clinton's 1993 federal tax package. The way our tax rates are structured are such that if you are single, you have an advantage of paying less tax than if you're married. Married couples with dual incomes are hurt the most. For example, a single person earning $50,000 is in the 28% tax bracket and pays $9,400 in taxes. If he or she gets married to someone also making $50,000, they're pushed into the 31% tax bracket and will pay more than $20,000 in taxes. That's almost $1,300 more than if they were still single. Higher income couples are socked even harder by the marriage penalty. If one person making $100,000 and the other $120,000, as single filers, they're both in the 31% tax bracket and would pay a combined $55,500 in taxes. But if they decide to tie the knot, they'll be in the 36% tax bracket and will owe $60,800, a difference of $5,300. Some couples can reduce their tax bite by filing what's called married filing separate. This is a good idea for someone with high medical bills. That's because medical expenses aren't deductible until they exceed 7.5% of adjusted gross income. Therefore, the lower the income, the more that's deductible. Some couples, however, are almost always better off filing jointly. Filing jointly generally is most advantageous for a married couple where one of the spouses has uh, a preponderance of the income or all of the income. Their filing separately uh, will almost uh, invariably produce a worse result than the, uh, the joint return. Accountants say invest the extra time and run the numbers for both filing statuses, choosing the one with the best bottom line. That's your money. John Defterius, CNN Business News, New York.